Hi there, my name is Jesse. I work here at InkCB Labs, and I want to talk to you today about ChemSketch. This is our molecular drawing package, and we think that it's a really convenient alternative to some other ways to present your molecules and present your chemical information. So this is going to be part of a series of videos about ChemSketch. Uh, it's actually a really easy program to use, but there's a lot of features and functions that people don't necessarily realize that are in there. So uh, it's aimed at anybody who's either you know, advanced as you other drawing packages before, use ChemSketch for a while and want to get more out of the program, or if you're just starting out and you want to learn how to use the program properly, this is another great uh, resource for, for you as well. For the first video of this series, I'm going to be focusing on some foundational concepts and foundational functions that you should know about when you're getting started in the program, and particularly around helping your molecules look really crisp and, and good as you intend. Um, this is in some ways going to be focusing more on the chem uh, sketch side rather than the chem side of this. Not a whole lot of chemistry going to be in this particular one, but we'll get to that in later bits of the series. Um, so the four topics that I want to talk about today, the first is navigating the program and using pages. Second is going to be using the different structure drawing modes that are available and as well as the selection modes and using the clean structure function. The third is going to be using the properties menu to adjust how your molecules look. And then the fourth is going to be exporting and saving, which is particularly useful when you're trying to share your science with other people. Now you can of course stick around for the whole thing and uh, hang out with me or you can jump ahead to any of the particular points that you're most interested in. There should be some time stamps right over here as well as some uh, chapter markers below me uh, within the, the timeline. So jump ahead to any of those that you would find you know, more or less useful and I won't be offended. Um, but before we get into things, one last note, uh, be sure to like subscribe and share. Uh, it really lets me know that you guys are interested in this kind of content and all especially though, leave those comments so that I know what other topics you want me to cover in the future, because I'm hoping to be able to do more of these. But that's everything. Let's get sketching. So this is, of course, a, a brand new um, chem sketch file in it with uh, nothing done in it yet. So just wanted to show you a little bit about how the zoom works first and then also the options around pages. So for this, there are three different modes of uh, automatic zoom. Um, the first one is full page, which uh, sizes it so that you get the full uh, length of the page here. Um, the next is page width, which of course adjusts it. So the page width is uh, across the entire page. I think this is uh, pretty favored by a lot of people um, when they're setting up their, their pages and trying to do things. Um, the last one though is is a handy little one. I'll show you how it works. So this is um, the fit all function so that it zooms in to fit all of the different um, structures that are on your page right now. So if we did the width version right now, you'd only see the one, but we can go here and we can see both of them and they're fit together uh, quite nicely and even cut off some of the top if we don't want to focus on that. You can also, of course, change the number on the um, zoom if you want to be very picky about it and have it something very specific or you have a uh, these options as well. Um, next, I want to show you just very quickly how to do um, the page functions. So we can have a new page to our document. Right now, there's only one page to our chem sketch document. Um, but we add a second one here and like, oh, look, we already have it blank. So this is still part of the same file, which is handy for a few different things that we have this and then we can switch back and forth down here going between our different pages. Um, this is particularly useful if you're trying to do a bunch of different um, structures that are part of a larger product uh, that uh, need to be used multiple times and you want to be able to go back and move them forward and not have to totally recreate them um, and uh, just want to work in one common uh, piece or you want to have them in different files. So one example that's uh, kind of nice is like we're going to put some stuff here and go back to this file and we say that th this page rather and we want to remove everything from this page. We can go to edit, select all, 
delete everything this page is is gone this page is empty um but the second page is still has things on it so if you want to kind of keep them separate and uh treat a few different um things that you don't want them all on the same page so that you don't quite have that level of freedom it breaks them up and keeps things nice and spaced so that's a a nice advantage of the program and then you can also delete pages if you'd like like that so now we're back down to one page so now that we have that out of the way, let's spend a moment talking about the different structure drawing modes that are available to you. There are three main modes that you should know about. It is the normal, the continuous, and then the chain mode, which all have different advantages and disadvantages. Uh, then we're also going to talk about selection tools and then the clean structure function, which is a favorite of mine. Let's get into it. So with structure drawing, there are three modes. There's draw normal continuous and chain that are the most important to know about. Uh, draw normal, when you do a left click, you just drop a, an atom onto the page. It'll also populate it with hydrogens, uh, assuming that there are hydrogens left that are in it. So obviously with carbon, you're not going to have random carbon atoms hanging around. They're usually going to be in a network here. Um, you can, of course, then drag them and to connect them into one another as well, uh, as we're all familiar with. Um, if you want to do that kind of thing a little bit faster, though, the draw continuous function is good for that. So I did one left click here and then just jumps to the next one, jumps to the next one, jumps to the next one. So it doesn't require quite as many clicks. So that's a nice advantage. Um, you can stop the chain from going by right clicking. The right clicking also actually switches between the draw normal and draw continuous uh, functions right here. So that's something that you have access to both of those really, really quickly. Uh, if you want to get used to switching back and forth of them, it'll speed up your structure drawing a little bit uh, better. Um, but the way to really draw quickly is drawing chains. So th this is the function right here. Hey, look, it's a C24. Um, so yeah, you just click this button for the draw chains, you drag across, you can count it out. It tells you how many carbons that you're talking about here. You can uh, do this with other molecules too. If you somehow were able to create an O14 molecule, I mean, I'm sure there's a Nobel prize in your future for that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's optional um, to, to have that if that's something that you wanna be able to do. So let's talk quickly about the selection modes. Right now I have the default selection mode on of uh, the, the lasso's off. Um, I'm going to turn it on here. This one is the box uh, mode, and then this one is a circular mode or a more um, a creative mode. So this is good if you're trying to do some very particular highlight of uh, parts of a molecule and um, are very picky on what you want to be able to, to grab. Um, that's useful for that. I think most people prefer the, the box mode, um, but it's useful to have this for some particular situations. So being aware of that. There are three different uh, select and move modes that you uh, should see here in the upper left hand corner. So the select and move is the, the, the basic one here. We, we grab things, we move them around, um, and it, which is good for that. We can also adjust the size of them too uh, in this nature in different directions. But then there are other options too. Uh, so for instance, if we want to select, rotate, and resize, this is a very useful function right here. So we can change the orientation, we can change the angle of, of parts of our molecule. This is uh, really useful, of course, for making things uh, look good and positioning things just right, uh, especially if you're talking about something related to stereochemistry. Um, one um, thing to highlight here is the anchor right here. So if you see this little job here, it is the anchor and you can place where the uh, rotation effect is going to be um, happening around. So I can show it right here and then rotate this like, oh, look, we can adjust the angle of that particular bond and the rest of it kind of contain maintains its consistent shape. So that's a nice little advantage of being able to be exact there. Um, other possibilities, of course, if you just have it in the middle here, you have the whole thing that's going to change. So, I mean, if you want to do that, that's a possibility too. Now, this, of course, is just a very messy, gross molecule at this point. Um, so that is why we have the clean structure function right here. So this is a really useful little tool to straighten things out and uh, get your molecules looking you know, normal uh, again. So this is now, of course, been um, 
made normal uh, and into a, a more realistic shape that, that we're familiar with. When you press this button, uh, the, the clean structure button, it does actually affect everything in the, the page. It doesn't affect everything on other pages as well. Um, so if we just quickly add another page, we're going to do uh, something messy here. We go back to this page, press clean structure. This looks beautiful. Um, this page does not. Um, so in case you want to have those separate, that's a possibility. Like, let's say uh, in this particular molecule, yes, it looks kind of ugly right here, but let's say there's a particular reason that I want this to look the exact way that it does, and I don't want it to rearrange itself. I just want to rearrange this half the molecule. I can select it, and I can click the clean structure here. Uh, or I can click this whole thing, clean structure here, if I don't want these to rearrange themselves. So that's an option that you have access to. Um, clicking this you know, pretty regularly, though, to cl clean up your molecules and uh, any angles that are might be a little bit askew, if there's a use useful tool to have access to. Formatting and styling molecules is very important for communicating your science, being able to enlarge particular atoms, change the configuration, and also just apply a consistent style to your molecules as well so that it looks very professional. So we're going to be talking about that using the properties menu and how to adjust all of those features. And I, I personally find this bit very useful. Uh, so this is a very useful little menu for being able to adjust what your molecules look like. I'm going to put it right here so that we can focus in tight on it. Um, so this has a lot of options in here of how to make different aspects of your molecule look. You can have uh, functions like showing your uh, terminal carbons on like uh, this. This shows all carbons actually um, in the way that it is right now. Or you can turn that off and only show your terminal carbons. So that's a nice little function there as well. You can adjust some uh, functions around showing zero hide zero charges. So apply apply that. We see all of our zero charge carbons here. If that's something that we care about for whatever reason. There are other ones too. We can adjust the uh, nomenclature of the, the molecules if we want to you know, change things like the font of them for a particular reason. We want to um, change the size uh, of the, the lettering. Um, we can do that through here, but there's a lot here just in the common um, menu that we can uh, do. So there's a couple of particular features that I want to highlight here that are quite useful. Um, we can use the atomic symbol size and a bond length here to adjust the size of different parts of the molecule. So right now I'm going to just uh, bring that down to 12 millimeters in size, apply it, and then this all shrinks down. Um, you also might have noticed that the atomic uh, symbol size also decreased when I did that. Um, that's because I have it set to auto. Um, if I want to change that, I can turn this off. I can go all the way down to a very small size and it will not change the size of the atom here so that the text here has remained the same if that is something that I want. Uh, and then you can just change them independently. Now we can talk about one of my favorite parts, which is color. Uh, there are little coloring um, bits down here, little windows uh, go in here to adjust the atom color here. So let's change this to a nice blue. So our atom is blue. Now notice that these symbols are still the same. These uh, settings are still the same. So when I applied it, it kind of made it look like uh, this part here. So be aware of that when you're applying different changes to different parts of the, the system. The bonds here, let's change these ones to uh, dark red. Why not? Now, so they're that color. We can adjust it to the whole molecule. We can, of course, adjust the atom style and bond style separately apply it to bold, apply it to italics. There's just so many different uh, you know, possibilities here that you can have your molecule looking uh, sharp. So I don't think this one's looking actually particularly that sharp at the, the moment. It's a little bit silly, um, but we can adjust it to a particular style. We actually have some uh, set styles in here. So for instance, ACS style, let's apply this. Okay, so this one is going to be um, according to the specifications of the ACS style, what they use in their publications. So this is the, the, the sizing and the atom configurations. And now that they're no longer showing those terminal carbons, for example, 
We can go through a wide variety here if you want to look at Helvetica Chemica Acta. Um, that's a little bit bigger. We have normal style right here that we can apply as well that gives us back our terminal carbon. So you can look through those and find one that works well for you and your preferences. Or if you're submitting to a particular journal, you have that um, you know, access as well that you can jump right to whatever style that they, they prefer. And you also have the opportunity to set your own preferred style. So let's say we like, I like this one. I just want to have it bold all the time. Apply this here. Um, I am going to change the name of this to bold, and then I'm going to save it. So this is now into my file. I have this right here so that I can access it anytime that I like. Uh, first, I'm going to go back to this one, and I decided I don't like that one. Back to bold. Hiya. So easy to use uh, and allows you to uh, really customize and uh, make a consistent look across your publications and, and writings if that's something that you're uh, interested in. Finally, let's talk about saving and exporting. There are a lot of options that are available to save and export your ChemSketch files in different configurations and that those have different advantages and disadvantages. And I uh, just wanted to highlight a few of the options there that are particularly useful uh, if you're trying to share your science with other people and uh, different possibilities in that case. So we've come to the end of our drawing. This is what we want to have for whatever reason. I don't know why you want it. This combination of structures, but let's say that this is the combination of structures that you were looking for and you're very happy with it. So you could of course save it a uh, standard way. So this is you know, very normal um, for you to do. This was already saved. So that's why that didn't uh, pop up, um, but you can have it here. We can have pile here, um, very normal, of course. But um, there are some exporting options that I want to draw attention to or save as functions as well. So save as, I have the opportunity here to save this as a bunch of different file types. And these have very different um, meanings and, and, and functionality to them. So a few I want to highlight. Uh, first is, let's talk about um, JPEGs. We can save this as a, a JPEG here. This will, um, is obviously not uh, able to reopen this within ChemSketch or any other chemical drawing package. This um, makes it just a static image. So um, select format cannot be reopened in ACD ChemSketch. So that's fine. Um, and then other objects will be lost on the other page. So that's an important bit that uh, matters for some of these is that you'll see that this second page, our beautiful structure on the second page will be lost and we'll only see this page worth of image when you're saving it in that manner. Next, let's do this, of course, with um, PNG is very similar to that, so we can skip that. PDF, though, has uh, an advantage that you do get to, uh, you can't reopen it into ChemSketch, but you do save both of the pages. So if I went opened this uh, file now, the structure here on the second page would still be into the file, so that it would just be on a separate page. Lastly, um, you can actually save your file as a number of different um, molecular drawing package notations and, and uh, files. So for example, you can save this as a CDX file, a chem draw file. And uh, so you save this here. Um, once again, we're going to be losing our objects that are on the other page, but I'm not that attached to it anyway. So that'll be okay. Um, but you can then uh, reopen things from the uh, CDX file as well. So people sometimes are worried about compatibility between ChemDraw and ChemSketch, but you can open the files. You can send them files quite easily just by using that functionality. So you don't need to worry about that. But that should cover everything that you need to know about exporting files, and uh, hopefully that was all very useful to you. So that'll be everything from me today. Thank you so much for joining me. As I said earlier, please leave your comments of what kind of content you would like me to share uh, in this format. If there are other particular tools within ChemSketch that you want me to go in depth about, uh, I have some ideas of my own, but I would love more feedback from you guys to make sure that I am uh, hitting what you guys are interested in. Um, but that is everything for me. Thank you so much for your attention and happy sketching.